Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the difference between paranoid personality disorder and schizoid personality disorder? Now, both of these personality disorders in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual are in cluster A, and that's the odd eccentric cluster. The other personality disorder in cluster A is schizotypal personality disorder. Now, with these personality disorders, we see a stable pattern of maladaptive traits. And a lot of times, an individual with one of these personality disorders has a inner experience that's congruent with their traits and behaviors. So they tend to see the world as out of line, as opposed to their behavior not being consistent with social norms. So let's take a quick look at the symptom criteria for these two personality disorders. So with paranoid personality disorder, there are a number of potential symptoms, including that an individual with this disorder suspects others are harming, deceiving, or exploiting them. There's a preoccupation with doubts about the loyalty of friends and associates. They're reluctant to confide in individuals because they're afraid that information will be used against them. They read into benign remarks, and particularly what they see there is demeaning or threatening content that's not really there. They tend to hold grudges and perceive attacks on character or reputation, even though there's no evidence to support that, and are quick to have an angry reaction or to counterattack. The last symptom criterion of paranoid personality disorder is suspecting infidelity in a romantic relationship. So some of the associated features and consequences of paranoid personality disorder would be being socially isolated, having a need for control, being self-sufficient, being combative, litigious, critical of other people, having grandiose fantasies, appearing cold, appearing to lack empathy, and having few friends. So now comparing this to schizoid personality disorder. Now at schizoid personality disorder, often individuals with this disorder are thought of as loners. They tend to be withdrawn, isolated, and reclusive. So taking a look at the symptom criteria for schizoid personality disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, we see that the symptoms are congruent with that sense of being withdrawn or being isolated. So first we have there's no desire for close relationships, including being part of a family. We see that an individual typically seeks out solitary activities. They have little or no interest in sexual activity. They don't get pleasure from many activities, if any. They lack close friends, with the exception sometimes of a first-degree relative. They are indifferent to praise or criticism. And the last symptom criterion is they appear to have a cold, detached, or flat affect. So some of the associated features and consequences we see with schizoid personality disorder would be that an individual with this disorder oftentimes appears to be adrift in terms of goals. They don't appear to have a clear direction. They don't appear to have strong emotions to situations that would normally evoke strong emotions. And oftentimes, even if they're provoked, they won't have an angry reaction. So right away we see a difference here between schizoid personality disorder and paranoid personality disorder. So taking a look at the similarities between these two personality disorders, the first one is social isolation. The reason for the social isolation is quite different though between paranoid personality disorder and schizoid personality disorder. With paranoid personality disorder, it's oftentimes because the hostility and combative nature drives people away. With schizoid personality disorder, it's because the individual has no desire for relationships. They have no desire for social interaction. And they simply choose activities that don't involve any social interaction. So we have social isolation as a similarity, but again, the reasons are quite a bit different. Now, along with that social isolation component, we have the few friends component. And again, the reasons are different, and they're really along the same lines. Somebody with paranoid personality disorder tends to drive people away, and somebody with schizoid personality disorder doesn't want to have friendships. We also see this perception of being aloof and cold with both personality disorders, and this perception of having a restricted affect. So in terms of differences between these disorders, well, with paranoid personality disorder, we see a lot of hostility and suspiciousness. It's just not there, typically, with schizoid personality disorder. We also see that strong anger reaction 
We don't see that with schizoid personality disorder. With paranoid personality disorder, an individual with this disorder is oftentimes in different relationships, including romantic relationships. That's not something we typically see with schizoid personality disorder. In terms of the characteristic of paranoid personality disorder and finding hidden meanings and a preoccupation with doubts about loyalty, we don't see this in schizoid personality disorder. So when we think of these two disorders, we could think of some of the paranoid personality disorder being highly interested in what other people say and some of its schizoid personality disorder being disinterested. Some of its paranoid personality disorder is sensitive to criticism, sensitive to what's going on around them, what people are saying about them or to them. Some of its schizoid personality disorder would tend to be insensitive to that. Another way to think of it is an individual with paranoid personality disorder is actively engaged. It may not be in a productive way because of that hostility and combativeness, but they're actively engaged with people around them. An individual with schizoid personality disorder would tend to be disengaged. I hope you found this description of paranoid personality disorder and schizoid personality disorder to be interesting. Thanks for watching.